Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, how to commit your plugin sound while you're recording. This one's gonna be a fun one because it's an inspiration from the way records used to be made. It all was about the signal chain, what kind of instruments you were using, the microphones, and the outboard gear or consoles you would record to, and then the end medium in which you would record to. All of those things added together and created a sound. And once you were done recording, that sound was permanent. Maybe this is something you wanna incorporate into your productions. Perhaps you find yourself recording acoustic guitar and always using the same compressor settings. Well, what you could do is actually throw that compressor onto the input. Let's dive into the DAW and I'm gonna do a little bit of setup here to show you exactly what I'm talking about. All right, I've got everything set up. I've got my headphones because we're gonna be recording. I've got my guitar, I've got the microphone and this camera for you guys so you can see everything going on here. And then let's take a look at what's going on inside the DAW. I have my one track open and I have it named Acoustic Guitar. Then I also have on the mixer pane, the inputs selected. And you can see I've already done a little bit of prep work, but here is a signal chain that we can imprint onto the recorded material. This is something you are going to commit to your recordings. If you're gonna throw these things on the inserts, this is something you're manipulating after your recording. And I'll show you that in a little bit as well. We'll just copy all of these things over to the first pass, which is just gonna be our raw guitar. So here we go. I'm just gonna do a couple chords and I'm gonna do the same chords every single time and it's gonna be a different performance each time, but I'm gonna do my best to make sure that they're consistent each time. And then you'll see the waveform change for each recording as we slowly put the inserts or the plugins on one by one, creating our perfect chain or something we're just committing to tape, as they would say. Okay, so that was six different takes of our acoustic guitar. And with each take, I inserted a new plugin into our chain. And I was thinking of the analog recording process. And so it would go mic pre, EQ, compressor. And then I went ahead and did some soothe from Oak Sounds just to kind of tame any nasty resonant frequencies, and then we're going to tape. Now, mind you, the analog days, they wouldn't have Soothe, but we're in the digital world and we're just paying homage to the process that we learned from them and modifying it for the day we live in now. So we started with our raw acoustic guitar and it's my Rode NTG4 shotgun mic that I always keep on my desk, pointed at the acoustic guitar about eight inches away. Here's what that sounds like. Coming up next was our mic pre. We used the Slate Digital FG76 to give us a little bit of that analog mic pre flavor, and that sounds like this. Following the mic pre, we go into our EQ. And for this one, I used PreSonus Pro EQ 2. And I just pulled open a preset, Guitar Clear Acoustic. And you may notice from our waveforms, even though I played it pretty consistently, we have higher peaks on this. And that's because we're actually adding EQ with our low mid bump here and our presence bump up around 3K. So we're adding signal in our recording chain. That's why we have a different looking waveform. But 
How does it sound? Again, thinking from the days of analog recording on a big SSL or Neve console, you probably had an inboard compressor. And that's exactly what we did. I used the stock compressor from PreSonus. And again, I just pulled open a preset. This one's acoustic strumming. And that's this waveform here. Now you can really see how we're taming our peaks. And the waveform reflects this because we imprinted the sound of the compressor into our recording. And it sounds like this. After that, because we're in the digital world, let's get rid of any resonances. We're using Soothe 2 from Oak Sound. And again, I pulled up on a preset, soft if well recorded, hard if not. So if I was playing too hard or the compressor was giving too much signal out of it into Soothe, it would work a little bit harder. There shouldn't have been a lot going on here. And you may have noticed we're not actually seeing anything happen. It's because we've already imprinted the sound of these plugins onto our recording. I'm just pulling them open as a visual reference for you guys. But we'll go back to the raw and I'll drag all of these plugins onto the track in a minute and you'll see we can get the same sound. So here's Soothe after the compressor. And we're going to round everything out. We went with a tape emulation, as if we were recording in the analog days to analog tape. Makes sense, right? That's this last waveform here. And here's how it sounds. Okay, so that's how you can actually record the sounds of your plugins to your audio waveforms, is just put the plugins on the input. But you do have to be careful. This is a bit more resource heavy, especially depending on the plugins you're using. And you won't see or be able to manipulate this audio or the amount of compression we'll use, for example, after the fact. Now, you can add more compression later, but if you over compress while you're recording, you can't really undo that. You're going to have to do another take. Sure, you could try some methods to kind of give you some dynamic range back, but if you're really clamping down, you're not going to get that back. You're going to have to redo. But let's go back to our original acoustic guitar, and here's how it sounds just to remind you one more time. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all of the plugins from our input channel and just drag them over onto the audio track itself. And what we should get is something very similar to our last waveform. And to just kind of show you what's going on, I'm gonna bring this to a new track and mute it. And we should be able to do a quick AB because there's no plugins on the waveform we dragged onto a new track. You can see there's no plugins. So here's our raw acoustic with everything dragged over. So there you go. As we were playing back with the original track, this one here, you could see the gain reduction meter was actively going. We had the tape emulator open, and so you could see the VU meters going. You can see that the plugins were active. Now, is it an exact copy of what we have on this new track that we dragged our audio over? No, they are different performances. And we can go in and tailor and manipulate the plugins on the first track to really dial things in. But that's not the point of this video. These are not settings to use for your acoustic guitar for all of your productions. This is to show you that if you do something 
pretty consistently through and through that you don't necessarily have to wait until the mix phase to throw your favorite compressor on whatever your source material that you frequently use that compressor on. You don't have to wait until the end. If you can dial it in in the beginning, you can commit those sounds and then have a leg up when you're in the mix process because you've already done some of the processing while recording. Now again, you're committing this. So if you're unsure, stick with the plugins when you're mixing and handle it then because then it's non-destructive. Plugins on the track, yes, it's gonna manipulate the sound, but the original waveform doesn't alter. The plugins just alter the sound. When you put the plugins on the input, you are then making destructive changes that cannot be undone. It doesn't mean it's bad destructive. It just means that the audio waveform will permanently have the sound that you've dialed in through those plugins. So if you get something a little off, it's gonna stay a little off. I hope this inspires you to try this every once in a while on some of your productions. But again, remember, you can always manipulate the audio after the fact when you just do everything raw with no plugins on your inserts. When you put your plugins on your inputs, you're committing those sounds. So maybe be very gentle with things. If you wanna do some compression, one to three dB max, and make sure you're listening to how it sounds because you will hear that sound in your headphones or your studio monitors as you're dialing things in before you hit record. That's all for now. If you found anything informative, please like and share the video. For mixing or lesson information, check out timflansbaum.com. And if you have a question, ask it in the comments and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.